Welcome to another in the mail, which is the most popular type of video I publish on my channel. And I guess many people agree that it is exciting to find these new tools and gadgets that we can use to equip our hobby shops. I'm going to start with this 45 watt dual USB type C power delivery capable GAN based USB charger. And it's from a company that you've seen me use before. It's called VoltMe. And I already own several of their 30 watt versions of, of this adapter, multiple of them. Like I said, I use the 30 watt version at my nightstand for charging my phone and uh, watch over the night. And that's been great and reliable for the past year and a half or so. I even use it, uh, I, I even used it when I traveled for a few days, but uh, recently, I uh, switched to a MacBook Air M1 processor laptop, which comes with um, this 45 watts adapter for charging. And here's my problem that I'm trying to optimize. Whenever I travel for a couple of days to a conference or something like that within the EU, I always pack light and I only bring the free carry-on to my flight. And this means I have to pack very light and tight. So if I could have this very small charger that could charge my phone and watch overnight, so two USB-C ports and maybe once for my laptop during the day, the 30 watt version of the adapter could do that, but it was a bit slower with just 30 watts. I need 45 watts for my laptop for full charging power. And um, for sure, I don't want to carry two adapters. So that's why I searched for a 45 watts equivalent with basically the same functionality as the 30 watts model. So it has to be gun based um, to get my requirements in the smallest and lightest form factor possible. And here it is, they uh, make one, it's the same quality, just bumped to 45 watts, slightly larger. And strangely enough, right now, uh, when I was checking the cost, the 45 watt version is quite a bit cheaper than the 30 watt one. So it depends on the promotions they're running. And here is a quick test charging my laptop uh, that uh, looks right, seems to be doing the job and the actual charging current will vary depending on the charge state of the battery will be determined by the charging circuitry inside the laptop but that looks pretty good to me i'm happy with the purchase next up i have a couple of these um, low profile uh, so-called 1u cpu coolers and these are for the intel lga 1155 1156 1150 series of cpus from intel and i got these because i'm currently building some uh, open source SHA-256 mining boards based on the BM1366 ASIC from Bitmain. It's quite an interesting open source project where people have reverse engineered the closed source ASIC commands, have figured out how to talk to these chips to get them initialized and hashing. So I want to build and contribute to this open source project and I'm designing my own boards and uh, I needed some uh, cooling. Uh, these ones from AliExpress are pretty cheap. They're about eight to ten dollars a piece and they should be adequate, I believe, for uh, 45 watts TDP, but that remains to be um, evaluated. They come in these uh, various styles. Uh, th this one has an, like an integrated uh, copper part here. Cooling fans, you know, seems to be seem to be pretty generic, but can obviously be uh, replaced with something like a Noctua if you wish to do so. What mattered for me is the um, uh, spacing uh, for the screws and these come with the back plates. Uh, I needed, uh, you know, the very this very specific spacing that I put into the uh, PCB design uh, so that the screws match and the overall shape matches. The link for these will be provided in the description below. Next up, I got a set of these uh, quarter inch drill mount brushes. These are, you know, pretty stiff plastic uh, brushes. They can be useful to replace some of the elbow grease whenever you need to do some deep cleaning or scrubbing. Um, unfortunately, these I noticed are not as cheap as they used to be on AliExpress and that's partly due to cost increase and inflation, partly due to shipping cost increase and partly due to import and VAT taxes. So you could very well find these uh, locally for a similar cost. Now, if you have the patience to search for them. Next type, I got some of this two millimeter thick adhesive rubber strip and uh, it's 40 millimeter in width. And I needed this to recently fabricate two custom uh, rubber seals for a repair I performed on the trunk hinge of my VW Golf. Because the original seal that goes between the body of the car and the hinge only comes pre-installed on the original set of hinges, which cost an arm and a leg to get from the dealership, they don't offer just the seals separately. So I got this rubber 
and I made this 3D printed kind of um, uh, clamp or stencil which I used to clamp the rubber material tightly between these two uh, rings uh, by using this uh, screw and then with a sharp blade I just cut around the contour of this uh, leaving a perfectly round seal between uh, these two 3D printed parts. I also did the set from a slightly thinner but more flexible uh, silicon matte material uh, but I ended up using these uh, thicker ones uh, on the actual hinges. And uh, while I was thinking how to fabricate these uh, round uh, rubber seals, I also had a look at some circular um, uh, cutting knives and found this set on AliExpress. Let me quickly open this. It's a bit oily because uh, the knives have been oiled up for uh, preservation so they don't rust. Unfortunately, these do not contain the exact diameter I needed for my um, uh, seal uh, because it needed to sit in this very specific cutout and have a very specific diameter. Uh, but I purchased this set anyway because it has some standard diameters in here, which I think uh, will be useful at some time in the future for cutting something in a round shape. Next up, I have a short USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable, but a special one. I guess we can call this one special because it's rated for USB 3.2 Gen 2 speeds up to 20 gigabits per second, which I needed for an external SSD drive that I recently purchased. And uh, in the meantime, uh, I have also returned. Uh, the cable feels pretty high quality. It's thick. There is, you know, lots of uh, wiring inside this uh, short USB cable. Uh, it's braided. So I can highly recommend this specific one. I have also tested it, so it was able to match the speed with no problem. So this Kingston SSD that I got only came with a USB type A to USB type C cable in the box, which meant I wasn't able to connect it to my Mac mini, which only has USB C ports. Now this cable that I got from AliExpress worked without any issues with the SSD. But the reason I returned the SSD was that I finally decided to move to a uh, network attached uh, storage solution. And I'll probably do a series of videos on that topic in the upcoming months. But long story short, the SSD wasn't needed anymore because I shifted to a different storage option and long term storage strategy. But if you need one of these, a link will be provided in the description below. Next up, as part of my uh, consulting business, I'm working on a project for a uh, customer which includes a 3-inch capacitive touchscreen. I, I thought I'd get one of these active touch stylus pens, and this one obviously tries to mimic the uh, Apple Pencil. Um, I would say it looks pretty good. It's slim. It has magnets inside, so you can attach it to the side of a corresponding tablet with magnets. Uh, it has a uh, USB-C uh, charging port in here but you're gonna lose this cap if you're not careful with it. And it actually works pretty nice. I've only tried it on my iPhone so far, but you know, it works flawlessly, it's pretty precise. You have to manually turn it on by double tapping uh, this end of the pen, which is a like a capacitive button, and then the LEDs light up blue, signaling that it's active. And um, I believe the manual does mention that it will auto shut down in 30 minutes. Now that might be annoying. I don't think it checks to see if it's being used or not. It just shuts off based on a timer. And I have no idea about the actual battery life, but the specs claim four to eight hours, which is a pretty wide interval. I'm not sure uh, on how it's going to vary within that interval, but it was fairly inexpensive. So I think, you know, this is a good buy for occasional use. It will obviously not be as good as an original Apple Pencil in terms of features and battery life, um, but it's fairly cheap uh, and, and for occasional use, like I, I, I will need it. I think it's going to do just fine. And you'll find a link to this in the description below. Next up, I have a fairly interesting toy for kids uh, age three and above. This is a kid's digital camera, and I thought it's a pretty cool gadget for about $15 shipped, VAT included. I'm guessing that if you order this shipped to the US, that will uh, be minus VAT, maybe cheaper shipping cost. You could get it closer to $12, which is incredible that they can make and ship this for this cost. So this has, uh, first of all, this like silicon protection sleeve, and it does have a USB Type-C charging port. It comes uh, with a 2.0 inch LCD. Let me just turn this on. 
It has an internal 400 milliamp hour battery. It's a 1080p capable camera, so very low resolution compared to modern standards. But hey, a kid is gonna have fun with this, taking pictures and you know just and seeing them on screen. It's like the refresh rate is super high, so you get this really you know high quality feeling from this camera. And there is more to it. Apparently, you know, it also has like these built-in filters that you can enable and they, they can have fun with that and it's actually a dual camera because this viewfinder is uh, actually a selfie camera and it also has some basic built-in games so a lot for a kid to discover. One thing to consider though when purchasing toys from sources like AliExpress is the safety of your kid. I mean they do mention uh, on the box that it's for kids age 3 and above uh, but one possible danger that I spot immediately is the micro SD card uh, for storage which can be removed and swallowed by small children so I encourage you to evaluate for yourself the risk of giving this to your kid and if this was made and sold by a reputable western company it would have probably had either an internal flash memory or even an internal SD card or protected uh, if it's externally it would be protected with like a screw cap so the kids cannot get to it. Now, personally, I think this is safe enough for my kid uh, and I think he'll enjoy it. Next up, I got uh, some more of these small bags in the anti-static uh, silvery type finish and also the static dissipative red type finish. At least that's what they advertised. I hope it's not just colored plastic. Um, this is the size of bags that I use a lot in my workshop because whenever I get the big bags from the component distributors, I always transfer it to a smaller bag like this because otherwise stuff would just not fit in my plastic bins anymore. So I always print my own labels and rebag stuff in these smaller bags. As always, a link will be provided in the description below. Next up, I got more of these, um, this uh, Kfuter <laughs> silicone adhesive sealant, and this one is K586, which is the black version of the silicone sealant. And I tend to use this for various small jobs. And the problem that I have is that it goes bad if you store it for too long not using it. I don't have a fridge here to store it in the fridge. I also do not take care to put, you know, some small seal between the cap and the bottle like a you can you can use like a piece of uh, uh nitrile uh rubber here and and just seal it and and I I'm just noticing this that this one has already been used. So yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's still soft inside, but uh, you know, when you see it like this, it should have been sealed. So I don't know if this is a fake or not, uh, but it looks like I got screwed over this time. Uh, this one has already been punctured. But like I was saying, if you use like a small piece of, uh, of uh, nitrile rubber from a glove uh, to seal the cap, that would for sure extend the shelf life, but I just don't do that and uh, it's it's just easier for me to purchase a fresh tube of this every year or two. Next up, I got a bunch of uh, these uh, PCB through-hole solderable uh, spade terminals uh, in different shapes and sizes. And the reason for this is because I would like at some point to complete this project that I've started to make an adapter for using a Parkside battery with a Kerher tool. So let me uh, give you the full story. I've been using this uh, brand of uh, vacuum cleaners for a few years now, and I do have you know several of them. I'm I'm pretty happy, uh, although they have this like industrial chunky look. They're very affordable, good quality, and have good suction power with generally very affordable consumables like filters and bags. And they're made in Romania, by the way. So recently I got a portable unit from them which uses these uh, these batteries. And I thought it would be very useful for cleaning the car. And while I do find the, uh, the unit to be adequately priced, the batteries seem to be quite expensive, at least when you compare them with the Parkside batteries. So let me give you an example. This uh, 5 amp battery, which supposedly will run the vacuum for 20 minutes, costs roughly 120 euros, which is almost the price I paid for the vacuum. While a Parkside 20 volt uh, 4 amp battery costs just 30 euros from Lidl. Sure, it's 4 amps, but I could get 4 batteries total for the same cost of the uh, Kerher battery. And yes, this one has a like a fancy LCD display to show you its, uh, its remaining um, charge. 
and it switches to minutes while you're using it so it gives you a time in minutes uh, for runtime um, yes that's fancy but i don't need that i just need cheaper batteries so um, i could also get like 8 amp uh, batteries from parkside for less than the cost of the 5 amp battery from uh, careher so i decided to build an adapter uh, that will work you know something like this it will slide um, something like this over the uh, parkside battery and then this side will have the terminals and it will be inserted into the vacuum it's a work in progress uh, i'm designing this in fusion 360 but uh, when I, I hope to get the chance to finish it so then i'll be able to use my um, extensive set of batteries uh, from my parkside tools with the carrier vacuum which by the way i'm very happy with that's a very decent job it's not as powerful as a wired one but it's just good enough uh, for its uh, form factor and portability as a heater slash controller relay i've been using this diy uh, esp board that i just designed many years ago and it's been the interface to home assistant which runs the thermostat algorithm to turn or off, on or off my heater to keep the uh, apartment at a nice uh, constant temperature however that uh, does not work as Oh, nice as I hoped because of the Wi-Fi signal coverage I get so the heater is practically behind the series of walls in a uh, remote corner of the apartment and so Wi-Fi coverage in that area is pretty poor so what tends to happen is that it sometimes loses Wi-Fi signal it tends to connect back in a few minutes so it's not like uh, uh, we're freezing overnight but I just don't like it that it's constantly dropping its connection and I've been meaning to fix it uh, either with an external antenna ESP board redesign or with uh, an additional access point to extend the Wi-Fi coverage. Now I've been postponing that uh, board redesign for too long. Uh, I just didn't have enough time to, uh, to start that project. Uh, I've been considering the uh, extending the Wi-Fi cover coverage with an uh, access point but that would be something like 100 euros for a Unify uh, access point uh, which is the brand that I'm running my network on. Um, so then I compared that with the option of just replacing the relay with a Zigbee version which is like 10 euros it's way cheaper than uh, uh, than getting uh, even 20 euros it, it's way cheaper than 100 euros to extend the Wi-Fi coverage just for one device because I don't need Wi-Fi coverage in that corner for anything else so I have great Zigbee coverage thanks to a few of my uh, Zigbee devices which also act as relays and I think this will work just fine over Zigbee and recently I discovered this brand of relays on uh, Aliexpress Avato they do look uh, a lot like Shelly relays they're very compact so um, it's pretty obvious who they're trying to copy but I decided to get one and see how reliable they are I've also taken uh, it apart so um, I'm going to put on screen some pictures of uh, the inside of this relay. It doesn't look too bad. And I've currently installed this one for just a few days, so I don't have a lot of feedback to give right now. But the first in impression is good. The device is small, compact, looks like it would fit inside an electrical junction box just nicely. Or if you want to use it just like myself as a Zigbee relay, all is good. And I'm going to place it inside uh, something like a plastic enclosure just to protect the electrical terminals so they're not exposed to the exterior yeah the job is done uh, with very little money invested and the last items in today's video are these apple airtag cases which are designed with a uh, needle pin for easy attachment to various uh, items you know bags clothing and i personally use these whenever i travel with the kid or when i visit crowded events venues um, it gives me an extra sense of safety because I know that in the event of getting separated from the kid I can track its position with, within a few meters yes it's not a perfect technology the tracking data may have some delay to it sometimes a few minutes but it's better than nothing and um, I also got a different model which is like this tiny green monster with a couple of loops that you can use to attach through the shoelace on his sneakers works pretty well and he was pretty happy to have the uh, tiny green monster badge on his sneakers same as always you'll find links for all of these items in the description below and that was all for today i hope you found something interesting to order if you did please let me know in the comments and i will catch you next time